Hi, Tim Two Wheels here. No, that's not what I wanted to say. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Tim Two Wheels. Today, I want to show you what is perhaps the simplest and handiest DIY project I have ever made for my garage. And that is a turntable for my motorcycle. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. A turntable for a motorcycle has to be huge. It has to be, what, six, eight feet in diameter? No. It's just a small 12 inch by 14 inch turntable that goes right under the center stand. Now I have been meaning to make this video for quite a while because I actually built this little turntable uh, probably about six, eight months ago, something like that. If you make one of these for yourself, you will love it. <laughs> I know I do. So stick around and I'm going to show you the details right after this. I want to thank toolvector.com for their support of Tim Two Wheels. While you're there, use the T2W discount code. You'll save 10% on your order. Okay, so I gotta admit, my inspiration for this project was the old Batman TV series. How many of you guys remember seeing Adam West pull the Batmobile into the Batcave on this cool turntable and then it just spins around, it's ready to go right back out the door? Well, that's what I needed. I keep my bike in a small one-car garage here. So once I get in the garage, there's not a whole lot of room to maneuver to turn it around and head back out the door. So my only other option was to turn the bike around outside and back it into the garage. Now I have a lot of stuff sitting outside my garage, uh, have cars and things like that. So it was just inconvenient. And if it was pouring down rain, it was even worse. <laughs> So I came up with this idea to just make a simple little turntable to park the bike on up on the center stand and be able to spin it around here in the garage. Now the fact that it's only underneath the center stand means that it can be very small. This particular one is only 12 inches by 14 inches. So I simply pull the bike into the garage. Now I have a piece of carpet laying here that I have taped down and that's not because the bike is a princess and can't sit on concrete. It's because it gives me a uh, defined area where I need to park the bike every time I pull into the garage. Now you could outline it with tape. You could put a simple strip down the center of the garage. And the reason I have to be very particular about where I park it every time is because this is a very confined space. It's a small one car garage and I have welders and forges and milling machines and a lot of equipment sitting around the sides. So I have just enough room to turn this beast around inside the garage. So that's why I have to be particular about parking it in the same spot every time. Uh, the nice thing is, is when I bring it in, I put it up on the center stand on the turntable and it's always here ready to go. If I need to work on it, I can simply just balance it on the center stand and just spin it right around. And then I can work on the side, I can spin it around, work on the other side. It just makes it really handy. And then when I'm ready to ride out, I just point it out the door, take it off the center stand and roll it right out the garage door and I'm ready to go. So I pull the bike in, I put it on its side stand and get off of it. Uh, the next thing I do is I typically keep the turntable over here on the side, uh, again, out of the floor. Somebody steps on it and spins out from under them or whatever the case may be. And then I just stick it under here and I have these two little pieces of gray tape uh, that I kind of use to align uh, on either side. It gets it in the center of the carpet and gets it about in the center of the garage where it needs to be. The next step is really just to heave this beast up, get the center stand lined up on my rubber, the rubber middle section, and then just stand it up. Like so. Now it doesn't have to be on there perfect. As long as I have the feet kind of centered in the turntable and somewhere on that rubber pad, it's been okay. Now, whether you want to leave your side stand down or put it up, but at this point, the bike is up on the center stand on the turntable.
Okay, so now here at the bench, I'm going to give you a closer look at, uh, at how I made this. So, um, first of all, let's, let's flip over and take a look at the back side. So here is the Lazy Susan bearing, and again, the links are below uh, to, if you want to order one of these. Now, this is not just any Lazy Susan bearing. Uh, this one is actually rated at 1,000 pounds. So if you're going to put a bike on there, a motorcycle, uh, you want it to be able to hold up uh, to the weight. This one's rated at 1,000 pounds, and it is a 12-inch uh, Lazy Susan bearing. Again, I have the link to this exact bearing below, and as you can see, it's 12 inches across. I mounted this to a piece of plate steel. In my case, I used a 8-inch um, thick plate steel. Now, I went with 8-inch because I wanted it to be plenty heavy-duty, and this one has been... Uh, has held up very well, hasn't showed any signs of bending. And as you know, I'm parking a, a, a GS Adventure on there, which is not a light bike. Now, if you have a lighter bike, uh, you can probably get by with maybe a 14 gauge. Uh, you could try 16 gauge, but that would be the lightest that I think you should go. And that would be with a smaller bike. Um, if you're going to park anything of any size on this, uh, I would definitely recommend going with uh, eighth inch or 0.125. So this piece of plate steel uh, is uh, 12 inches uh, this way by, I went with 14 uh, on the width. Now the width is really going to depend on how wide your center stand feet are. Again, this works with the center stand of the bike, that's why it's so small. Uh, I wanted to have a little bit of room on either side, so I just made it 14 instead of 12. But in most cases, you could probably go with 12 by 12, and it would be right at the edge of this bearing, just like you see here. So to mount the bearing to the plate steel, I have a welder, so I just did some tack welds around here, and that's been plenty secure. If you do not have a welder, you can get by, because the bearing comes with some mounting uh, holes pre-drilled in it on both the base the bottom and the top which is here it's upside down right now so you could put it in here like this and then use these holes to pre-drill or you could bring them in anywhere you wanted to really and just drill you some holes and then use a flathead uh, screw uh, so that it's flush on the back side if you wanted to countersink your holes a little bit uh, and then just use a, a, a nut on the back side if you can see here uh, you have about an eighth inch of clearance between the, this plate and the uh, top. It's actually a little more than an eighth inch. So you have enough room for your bolt to stick through a little bit and then to be able to put a, a nut on there. Now you wouldn't want it to be very tall like with a locking nut and a bunch of washers or anything because you would want to keep the clearance of that, uh, the bottom of that nut to be able to be shallower than this base plate because this is the part that's going to sit on the ground and it has to be able to to rotate freely so if you're sitting on a concrete surface or something like that where that wouldn't snag uh, you should be okay but if you have a welder i would recommend just welding that on now for any reason i ever need to replace this bearing if it quits working or whatever the case may be i can always just take an angle grinder and grind these little spot welds off and then just put a new one on and retack it. One word of advice <laughs> if you do weld, I would recommend taking some uh, painter's tape or uh, something and masking off this ring, this underside of this ring area, because you can probably see in here there are little ball bearings uh, back in here and that's how the uh, that's how it operates is those ball bearings are in a track and that's how it allows you to roll. The reason I say mask that off, because you can see some of the splatter here, or spatter from the welding. Uh, when you go to wire brush this and knock those little beads of welding spatter off, they can and will get back up in there in your bearings and then make it difficult for the bearing to roll. Just a little word of advice, a, a tip there, if you will. All right, so flipping it back over. Now, you don't have to do anything to the top if you don't want to. You can just put your bike up on there, but the surface of the steel is a little sticky. Now you could do something like spray bed liner uh, on there, uh, something to give it a little bit of rubbery grip. Whatever you put on there is going to be pretty durable because the steel feet of your center stand are going to hit it. Now the first 
round when I made this, I used some of the typical anti-skid uh, tape that you see in the stores uh, that has a real sandpaper-like gritty surface. And I had it on here just as wide as this. And I will include a link for that type of tape if you think that's what you want to use. I thought that was going to be the perfect solution. However, it works great for like the soles of your shoes or something rubbery. But when you put a steel foot stand on there, a steel kickstand, it just wants to slide on that gritty surface. So when I would try to put the bike up on this, it wanted to slip and slide off of that. So it didn't provide the grip that I was hoping for. So version two, I peeled that off and then I went with what I was really looking for was some kind of a, a standard rubbery uh, mat. And to be honest with you, a smooth rubber mat or one with a very low texture would probably work the best. But what I could find and what I had was this. I found these at my local Harbor Freight, so you can check there. But if you live somewhere that you can't find these, I do have a link below to toolvector.com and they actually sell these uh, rubber uh, pads to go in toolboxes or uh, running boards. Uh, you know, they're really for foot grip. So it came uh, like this in this width, it was pre-cut and it was a little over 17 inches long. Uh, and what I did was I stuck it on here and then just trimmed off the edges with a, a razor knife. Now another, tip of things I learned the hard way is these are adhesive backs so you can just peel this off and stick it on there. I can't speak about the ones from Tool Vector. they may have a better adhesive but this one that came from Harbor Freight was uh, the adhesive didn't really hold up. When I put it on the steel just as it was uh, when I put the bike up on it it wanted to shift around it wanted to peel off and it just kept coming loose. So what I did and I'll show you a little video clip here was I strip, peeled it off, stripped it all down, got all the old adhesive off, and then I used some uh, 3M Super 77. Uh, I've used this spray in a lot of things for seats, upholstery, foam, basically fabric, really anything that you want to adhere to anything. This stuff seems to do the trick. And you can buy this, again, at your local hardware store. Uh, it's just 3M Super 77 multi-purpose adhesive and it just sprays on what you do like you see in the video clip here I sprayed it to both sides let it get tacky and then I uh, stuck it to my uh, to my steel plate and so far it's holding up really well uh, you can see it's, it's a much better bond than what I was getting with the adhesive now the the orange tape here was uh, really just for alignment purposes I had the vision that I would be able to leave this on the floor and then ride over it. Uh, but to be honest with you, I've never tried it because the idea of my front wheel going over this and it could possibly turn or spin, uh, I, I see that as a potential problem. So what I do is in the garage, I, I just pick this up. I take it off this, once I take it off the center stand, uh, I've rolled the back tire over it just fine. Uh, and then I just take this off and set it to the side and then uh, it's not in my way when I ride back into the garage. And then I just stick it back under the bike, get it centered under it, and then just put the bike up on the center stand. Uh, I did uh, knock the corners off here just to keep it from potentially hitting um, anything or being sharp on the edges. And then I just filed the edges down uh, so that it, there wasn't sharp edges on the steel. One other thing that I will say is that it is in your best interest to keep this as thin as possible. The reason you want to keep it low is because the thicker this is, the higher it is, or the more difficult it will be to get the bike up on the center stand. Uh, you just have that much further to, to lift it, especially if it's a heavy bike like mine. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, I, I can't say enough great things about this little turntable. You know, when I first got, when I first made this, I thought, Eh, you know, it's worth a shot. I'll make one and see how I like it. And it, I just love this thing now. It's held up really well. Again, I'm using eighth inch steel, which is nice and sturdy. It's never bent uh, under the weight of my bike and the bike is fairly heavy. Uh, the little bearing, even though it is uh, inexpensive, cheap, you may say, it's rated at a thousand pounds and I believe it. It really has held up. It's shown no sign of warping, bending or anything. 
And I've had this in service for about eight months now. Uh, so it, it's held up. Now I also want to point out, I keep the bike parked on this all the time. So it's just a habit. I pull the bike into the garage and I get it centered and I put this little turntable under it, pop it up on the center stand and it stays parked on the center stand 24 seven. Uh, the only time it's off of it is when I'm out riding. Uh, so it stays on here. The, the, again, the steel and the bearing have held up just fine. So I'm not going to go on any longer. I just want to keep this as a fairly brief video to show you about this little DIY project. Just a reminder, check out the link below for Patreon. For more information about this and also links, check out tim2wheels.com, look under the projects, and uh, there'll be a, a detailed blog post about this as well. So as always, Thank you for your support. Thank you so much for watching. This is Tim Two Wheels, and that's how I did it.